Oh, we're so close to the promised land. We've got our final two games of the season. We're three points off of automatic promotion. We are down in fifth place, so it's a bit of a tall order. We play South End first today, so our old club, previously our most successful club, could ruin our automatic promotion plans, but we are already secured a playoff spot. And it's all looking like it's going to be a very exciting end to the season. But before we get into any of that, we need to welcome a couple of new members of the Kevolution. Thank you very much to Ivan Straum and Fred Tholarp. I apologise if I've said either or both of your names wrong. But thank you very much for supporting the channels over on the Patreon page at patreon.com slash We are incredibly close to the new green screen and a few other bits and pieces that we've got on our first goal on there um, so thank you very much for the support long may it continue and if you too would like to join the kevolution and get involved in supporting the channel via patreon you can do that at patreon.com slash lelujo Hello and welcome to Season 12, Part 9 of non to Legend. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we have our final two games of the regular season. We've almost certainly got the playoffs coming up as well tomorrow though. But we start off away against our old club Southend, then we're at home against Wolves. This is the league. Let's have a look at the league table. We have already secured our playoff spot. There are two games remaining. We're three points behind Rotherham, who are currently the team in second place, four points behind Newcastle. It's probably unlikely that we're going to win the league. It's not outside the realms of possibility that we secure automatic promotion, though. South end, uh, lower mid-table. Wolves, uh, lower mid-table. We could and should beat both of them, and then it really comes down to what Rotherham and or Newcastle can do, plus Burnley and Middlesbrough, who are sat in between us and them as well. Our goal difference is competitive, but not anything to write home about, so Newcastle very much have the edge on that, and we're also slightly behind both Rotherham and Burnley, but then we need them to lose for goal difference to come into place anyway, and by losing and us winning, we will go ahead of them both on goal difference in theory. Since you were last with me, we had another little sticky patch, and it's this sticky patch that has caused the, the, the problem of the running. We, I say it's sticky. We got a couple of draws, um, one of which was against Rotherham, so that was a good result. We had a 0-0 against Aston Villa. Then we beat Hull 5-1, including four goals from Lee Hartley, who has just been in absolutely incredible form in this run-in. He is non-league to legends, Jamie Vardy. If we can get promoted, he's still only 27 years old. He's made his debut for Wales this season, age 27. But look at this career. I have never, ever had a player in Football Manager in 20 years of playing the game who has gone through all the leagues. Now, I know he's not done it all with us, but he started out National League South with Hampton and Richmond then moved on to Cheltenham in League 2, but got relegated to the National League, then relegated again to the National League North before joining Swindon on a free transfer, staying there for a couple of years, then joining us on a free transfer in League 1, coming up to the Championship. And if we can secure promotion, he will have played in every single playable division in English football before his 28th birthday, which is a remarkable achievement. And he wants it more than anyone else at the club. He is in the form of his life. This is the team that we're going to be playing against our old club, South End, and we we just need to win. That's all it comes down to. If we don't win, we're definitely in the playoffs. If we do win, we have a chance at automatic. So in goal, we've got Thompson, a back four of Smith, Bajrami, Jordan and Grant, Smith, Fedri and Mantam in midfield, with the man of the moment, Lee Hartley, in behind Dixon and Yannicki up front. Still no place for Rowdy King in the starting lineup. Uh, there has been... A lot of call down in the comments to switch to a Christmas tree formation and have your Nicky up front on his own with Hartley and King behind him. I certainly see where you're coming from if we hadn't have just thumped Hull. And bearing in mind Hull are the team below one place below us in the league. We could conceivably be playing them in the playoffs. If we hadn't have just absolutely battered them the way we did, then I might be in for a, a formation change. But we can't mess things up now. We can't change things around now. Zelalim, the one remaining player of our time at Southend, is in the Southend team today. He hasn't been playing for the last couple of times we've played against him. But he is, he is back today. We've got just as many... Um, alumni of my South End team and our team as they've got in theirs with Josh Grant in at right back and Taylor Crossdale I think I've got on the bench that is not a good start to the game we're 1-0 down and that 
I mean, if it stays like that, we cannot get automatic promotion and we are in the playoffs. And if we end up in the playoffs, we really want to be going into the playoffs as the form team. We don't want to be the team that have snuck into the playoffs despite going on a run of poor form. Now, I know we've not lost for a while at the moment, but we're not in super hot, let's go and beat everyone else in the playoffs form. So... We need to, we need a result today regardless. Corey Jordan's already picked up a yellow card with less than 10 minutes on the clock. If our defenders do anything stupid today, I shall be cross and disappointed. Not just one or the other. I shall be both. Grant to Fedry to Smith. Hartley, that, I mean, it's a, it's a clever little through ball, but Dixon's not really awake to it. Grant now with the cross to Dixon. He was awake to that one and missed an absolute sitter. We could have been one all. Dixon, more than anyone, I think, has struggled to make the step up from League One to the Championship this year. But he he can hear me. How many times, certainly recently, have I been dissing a player only for them to show me I'm talking absolute bobbins. It's a beautiful through ball from Lee Hartley. Dixon, one touch, tucks it into the bottom corner. Remember, he's still only 19, I think. So I'm being incredibly harsh on him. He was our top scorer last year. Hasn't quite hit the same goal-scoring exploits this year, but when it really matters, he's weighed in with an equaliser today against Southend. And there is activity above us because both Newcastle and Rotherham are sat there on just 83 points at the moment. So there must be shenanigans afoot in their game. If we can pick up a win against Southend, we will be just one point behind the two of them going into the final game of the season if everything stays as it is, although Newcastle have just equalised I think in their game to go up to 84 points which would mean the title would be out of reach unless we can pick up a win and Newcastle don't but Southend are coming at us again they seem to be running past us with relative ease and it's 2-1 forget about any talk of automatic promotion it's the playoffs for us for sure we can't Southend are at I know they were the team that won League One last year and we were pipped at the post by him really but it's not really fair to say pipped at the post they were ahead all all these all season long and we just couldn't quite catch them up when we had our late season charge this year has been very different for us we sort of came up with the, all the momentum of last year and have fallen off a little bit in the second half of this season there is a strong argument not from me but from certain elements of the comments that it's probably for the best if we don't go up this season because we are obviously not even close to ready. But where's the fun in that? We weren't ready for the championship either and it's not been a bad season, has it? Right, let's bring on Martel Taylor Crossdale, former hero of South End. He's got 20 minutes. I mean, they've got nothing to lose. They can't get relegated. Let Taylor Crossdale and Josh Grant have a little bit of fun. Give the two Southend old boys the chance to play in the Premier League. That's what I'd be doing if I was Southend manager. Taylor Crossdale's in but can't quite get there. Smith out to Davidson. Davidson finds Manton. Manton to Fedry. Smith, Dixon now back to Smith again. Hartley's in! Lee Hartley hits the post. Oh, agonisingly close. We want another special performance from Hartley, but Dixon's in behind. And that's the second sitter of the match that Tom Dixon has missed. I know he's scored one, but the two chances he's had aside from that have been easier than the one he scored with. Oh, the man is incredibly frustrating and we need to find a change that can... That can get us back into this game we've got Rowdy King Jim McBride and Keith Shorthouse all on the bench any one of them is a game changer who do we take off though do we take off one of the central midfielders and just have an extra body in here doing fancy stuff or do we take off Dixon and go for the formation no we're not going to change we're not going to mess around now and um, we're going to take off Fedry we're going to bring on King and we're going to do that Rowdy King coming through from the midfield three he's not much cop defensively in there but he is an extra body to throw forward but it's all going to be for nothing because Southend have a free kick unless we can find two goals in the last 20 seconds of this game which just isn't going to happen although Taylor Crossdale is in but loses out I think this is going to be a one and done season at Plymouth for Martel Taylor Crossdale it just hasn't worked out for him this year we've lost frustratingly I think so of Newcastle um, but it doesn't matter to us. We are definitely in the playoffs next year. Um, next year? Now, not next year. Um, I think. Mathematically, mathematical. Our championship... So we can't win the league. We, yeah, we won't be able to win the league. Um, we've won just one of our last five league games. That's a bit of a... Uh, away games. That is a bit of a worry. 
So Newcastle did lose 3-1 against Brighton and Rotherham only drew 0-0 against Leeds. I mean, we had, everyone else did their bit. We had the opportunity. We could have been up on 82 points going into that final day of the season at home, just one point behind the two teams away at the top. Now it's just all about getting ourselves best prepared for the playoffs. We know we can beat Hull. We're less confident about the other two. But for, but first, we have to navigate Wolves in a game that, I mean, it makes no difference, really. We're going to be playing Middlesbrough in the in the playoffs regardless, unless they win and Burnley lose. Ooh, mathematics. Right, personnel-wise, we're unchanged for the game against Wolves. All we've done is swap Smith and Fedry round because they... they they can both play in both of these positions, so we'll try them that way around. See if Smith can offer a little bit more protection to the back four, as he has for two years at the club now, while we try and find a best position for Fedri, because it's still only his eighth game, ninth game for the club, and um, I, we've certainly not seen the best of him yet. Mantum, if he's got himself sent off after 12 seconds, I'll be sad. He hasn't. That's a good thing. And Thompson comes to collect the free kick from deep. It's still less than a minute on the clock and we've had two incidents already. This is madness. Right, Yannicki, odd ball to Dixon, but it falls to Hartley and Hartley's won a penalty with one minute, 12 seconds on the clock. This is the the most bizarre start to a game in the history of the world. Fedri scores the penalty, still less than two minutes on the clock. And Fabrizio Fedri has his first goal in a Plymouth shirt. Clearly, playing as a box-to-box -box midfielder suits him, or at least makes him more likely to convert a penalty, which he does with a plum. Take note of that going into the playoffs. Fedri can strike a penalty rather pleasantly. Um, right, so we're looking at permutations now. Newcastle and Rotherham have to mess up to not be part of the playoffs, and really, they're the two that we're most afraid of. Rotherham might seem a bit of an odd choice, but they've spent a lot of the last 12 years in the Premier League as have Newcastle. So we want the two of those to be well out of our way, although Wolves are in here. Thompson makes the save. Aside from them, Hull, we know we can beat. Plus, they're so far away from the other three of us. You've got to hope that Hull are just there to make up the numbers. Q is being knocked out by Hull, beaten by Hull in the final, anything along those lines. Burnley and Middlesbrough, I don't remember anything particularly about from matches with them this season. We're going to have to have a look at the... Results and fixtures thingy. Yannicki's in and makes it 2-0. Because I don't know who I'd rather play in the semi-final out of Middlesbrough and Burnley. I'm assuming that if all goes to plan, we'll play one of them in the semi-final and the other one in the final. We'll have to see how it all pans out, I guess. I don't think there's any way we can play Hull in the semi-final unless Middlesbrough lose i think burnley are already losing so we'd have to score a lot more goals to go above them i think so we definitely can't play hull it's one of middlesbrough or burnley unless rotherham or newcastle get dragged back into it but there's a three point gap there now so that's just not happening they're obviously doing well in their games middlesbrough and burnley are bottling theirs which is rather handy and we've won another penalty again with two minutes on the clock at the start of the second half can Fedri convert another rather pleasant penalty let's have a look he runs up he does I think he's put it the opposite side to what he did the last one as well. Fedri can take a penalty. Are we all writing that down? That's going to be relevant over the next two episodes, I hope. Actually, I don't know. I don't want penalties in the playoffs. What am I saying? I hope that's the last penalty we have, that man ever has to take. Unless we're... Like, oh, we're up to third. Hang about. Hold the phone. The phone? Hold the phone, everybody. Um, as it stands right now, goal difference has come into play and we would play Hull in the semi-final. Hull are the team that we beat 5-1 two games ago. Lee Hartley got four goals in that game. We know we can beat Hull. Playing them in the semi-final, in theory, should be a route through to Wembley. And Josh Grant has made it 4-0. What a, what a game this is heading into the playoffs. This is exactly the kind of form that you need to be showing going into the playoffs with a team with momentum. We're not missing out on promotion at the last minute. We've had two games to get over that. And now we're back into form. We're over the disappointment. And we're just thumping a team like Wolves again. Because that's what we feel like doing. This We didn't have to win this game. But we're absolutely tearing them apart. And it has to give us confidence going into those playoffs. They're in here. That's a really tidy finish from Mick Kint. I mean, there's not a lot else to say about it. It's it's a decent goal. Well well done, Mr. Wolves player. If we if this ends up being a four four, 
I take back all that nonsense I was just spouting. This will be a disaster going into the playoffs if we let them back into this. Um, right. Oh, it's quite interesting at the top. Look, Newcastle and Rotherham both sat there on 86 points. That's Newcastle's dominant goal difference coming into play again there. Although ours must be catching up with them at this point. And again, it's not coming from the strikers. Our strikers are just not very good at the moment. Right, Hartley's having his worst game for ages. And we're going to bring on the man Rowdy King. And Crossdale's going to come on for Dixon. We'll swap those two over. And King was in great form until he picked up an injury. And then Hartley, well, I think Shorthouse came in for a game or two. And then Hartley just got his feet under the table and decided he was never moving on. But before all that, and King's not been back in the team since, what a goal from Rowdy King. Goodness me, I don't even know how you score a goal like that from that position. We need to see this in 3D. Smith plays it to Yannicki, Yannicki to King. King, one touch. And you, he's just got no right to score from there. But this is what I was saying. I think he had four goals in five games in his first five games at the club. We know he is a quality player. He just hasn't been able to find a way back into the team because of how well Lee Hartley's been playing. But... It's nice to have options going into the playoffs. Hartley, by the way, has just won Championship Player of the Month, Player of the Month, with eight goals from seven games in April from midfield. A player who used to play in the Conference North and South and National. You know, he's been about a bit in the Conference, and he just got eight goals in seven games in the Championship. Four of them in one game against the team we're going to be playing in the semi-finals of the Championship playoffs. It's all coming together. Right, down in the comments, predictions for how the playoffs are going to go. We now know the shape of what these playoffs look like. If we have a look at... No, not the... Yeah, that screen will do nicely. So, we're playing against Hull. We are nine points ahead of Hull. We should be able to beat them. We stuffed them in the league just a couple of games ago. But then we've got Burnley or Middlesbrough in the final if we get that far. So, how did we do against Hull in the other game? We had a 1-1 draw... And then the 5-1 win. Burnley and Middlesbrough, the other two teams we're looking for. So, Burnley, we beat 1-0 away. Middlesbrough, we lost 2-1 away. And in the second half of the season, Middlesbrough, we beat 2-1 at home. And Burnley, apparently we didn't play. You lot are all now shouting. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. We do not want to play Burnley. We lost 5-4 at home to Burnley. Right, okay. Hull it is then. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.